Am I, am I good to go, Mr. Meredith? So I, I want to thank Ben, my very good friend, and one of my favorite people on the planet, for inviting me to come to Raleigh. I've never been to North Carolina, so thank you for having me. And thanks to my client, Pressable, for sending me here and paying for my hotel. That was all finesse in them. So I am a social media marketer. I'm a marketing consultant. And more importantly for this talk, I'm one of the um, team reps for the marketing team at Make WordPress. I just say Make WordPress because everything on WordPress is a subdomain. It's a, it's a tiny bit annoying, but it's really like laborious to go make dot wordpress dot org slash marketing you know but if you go to make dot wordpress dot org slash updates you could kind of like find out because there's so many people who are new um, the wordpress is part of the free and open source software movement and um, so that means it's all created by a community um, there's no people who are technically paid to create, maintain, support, document, train, market, translate, uh, work on WPCLI, Gutenberg, or any of those. There's about, I don't know, I lost kind of, I kind of lost count of the number of teams now, but it's over 15, I think. Uh, there's a GDPR compliance team, there's polyglots, there's, there's lots going on, but the point is that this is all volunteer work. It's not just that the meetups are run by volunteers, and it's not just that the word camps are run by volunteers, and it's not just that the speakers are volunteers. The whole ecosystem of WordPress is part of the free and open source software movement, including Drupal, Joomla, blah, 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 whatever else, right? So part, part of what's on my heart and something I found myself saying over and over and over and over since I started really um, traveling to word camps since October of 2015, I mean 2016, is that we're not taking care of ourselves. We're just not. Um, and there's no way you can have a thriving code base without a thriving community. So that's what, that's what this has to do with. There's so much more to WordPress than just core. And there's like even a bunch of those sub teams anyway. So, so it's very important to remember that these projects rely upon, and I'm not recruiting. I'm just saying <laughs> this it's, no, people don't know. I didn't know. Here's the thing. Okay. So at WordCamp US, um, a bunch of us were all going uh, for work back when I worked with Give, the most robust online donation plugin for WordPress. You can find out more at givewp.com. <laughs> um, so what I, we, well, it's like in me now. They're not a sponsor, but it, the, the point is that we all were going to WordCamp US, and all my coworkers, except for my immediate supervisor, were all developers, and they're like super excited about Contributor Day. And I was like, wow. I wonder what movies are playing, right? <laughs> because there's no way I'm going to Contributor Day all day to do what? I don't write code. I barely read markup. Like, let's be serious here. I'm a writer. I write words. And I put words in the boxes that's like, that I used to think was the back end of WordPress called the dashboard, which isn't the back of anything. It's not front or back. It's the Middle Earth of the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and so, um, uh, I ran into Andrea Middleton from the community team, and she goes, and I was just joking with her because that's how I am. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go see a movie. She goes, what do you mean? There's a marketing team. I go, there's a marketing team. <laughs> and so I kind of um, got recruited. I'm like, yeah, I can write email. Psst, you know, it's like a 20 minutes, right? It's easy peasy to write an email marketing. I can pump those out like no tomorrow. So she goes, yeah, let's just do that. And then... Um, <laughs> and then I went to WordCamp uh, Atlanta, and um, all of a sudden there was nobody there. And they're like, and the marketing team is like, woo, marketing! You know, the marketing team are the loudest people once they put us with WP TV, and they weren't really that happy. <laughs> um, and so they're like, do you want to lead Contributor Day? And I was like, okay. And so I picked up a, I picked up a person um, named Dwayne McDaniel, who you might know from Pantheon who's at Chicago. Hi, Dwayne, I miss you. 
Um, and so then I was like, okay, well, I got to have Jen Miller on this team, right? So she came with me to that contributor day, this Jen Miller. She's going to be speaking also. And so um, then Sarah Rosso went on sabbatical. She's like, do you want to lead this team? I'm like, sure. No problem. <laughs> like, blah. Then I was like, oh my God, it's just me. It's like this editorial calendar. You're like, you know, we, <laughs> we decided to be people who are publishing for the other teams, which means that I'm managing this like giant team of volunteer writers. And I was starting to feel like, oh, I don't want to get fired from my volunteer job, you know? <laughs> and I'm not sponsored by anybody. I literally am a volunteer. It's, it's, I work for myself, BridgetWiller.com, and like, I spend my Wednesday mornings doing this. And I'm late on the notes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So um, anyway, then uh, we, we had WordCamp Europe last year. Anybody going to WordCamp Europe? <coughs> oh, you got to go if you can. My t ticket to Belgrade was only $615. So cheap. So anyway, um, well, I mean, for going to Europe, that's cheap. It's cheaper than Paris was. So all of a sudden, we went from 10 people at US six months earlier to 30 people at EU. And then um, they were like, well, maybe we need some more teams. And all of a sudden, I started getting these more people. And I was like, you know what? Now, instead of it just being me, right? I have Jen Miller. I have Dwayne McDaniel. I've made a bar tool. I have Mike Reed from Bull Grid who's here today. I have Harry Jackson from Bull Grid who's here today. And I'm like, and I have Yvette Sonnefeld from uh, the Netherlands who I picked up at Europe last year. So like, the, the thing is, it do, even your own volunteer work doesn't all have to be you, you know? And I'm like, I can't run this meeting with all these Trello cards. It makes me crazy. So guess what happens? Dwayne and Harry do it like it's nothing. It's like, oh yeah, brr, 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 and I'm sitting there going, I'm just barely drinking my coffee. If I don't have Harry and Dwayne, it's not happening. They're like, we need you. And I'm like, I need you. This is the point I'm making. Even if you're by yourself working alone, even if you're a remote worker, you absolutely have to remember that when you do things for WordPress, you are a volunteer. And when it's not fun anymore, don't do it. You know, I used to be, I used to be on a band, uh, in a band at church, and, <laughs> and the le leader would always say, when in doubt, lay out. Like, if you don't know what's going on, then you're lost in the music, just don't play. It's okay. You don't have to. It's fine. You know, it's, the community is made to ebb and flow. So before, it was just Sarah Rosso, and then it was just me. And now we have a team, and I could die on a plane, and it's fine. The marketing team's going to be fine. They have Trello. You know what I'm saying? Like, we are all driven people. That's why we're here. That's why we have our own businesses. That's why you build websites and infrastructure. And that's why you have clients. And that's why you're successful. And that's why you're here, because you're a driven person. And we, we tend to apply those same kind of um, principles to everything that we do, even in our volunteer work. It's just volunteer work. And you, you know what's so great is my uh, marketing team has this pact with each other that the, the next time I say I'm sorry in Slack, they're going to go, hmm. <laughs> because I'm always like, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't post the notes yet. They're like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's going to be posted. It'll be posted sometime today, I promise. But like, they don't care. It happened Wednesday. They're like, it doesn't matter, Bridget. It's fine. It's just volunteer work. Like, the world isn't going to end. It's not nuclear launch codes. It's just meeting minutes. You know what I mean? But we, we tend to go like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this. And you're feeling stressed out. And you're feeling stressed out. And you forgot the joy of why you're giving back. So I want to talk a little bit about perfectionism. And I don't write code. And I don't write markup. But I did spend a significant part of my career in accounting. And I can't even tell you how many times I spent and how many hours I've wasted looking for a penny. <laughs> because accounting demands perfection. And if it's not perfect, it won't work, right? It's kind of like a website. Like, there's certain things that's going to get you a white screen of death, right? So, or, you know, there might be a spelling mistake. You could just, that's the cool thing. It's not print. You could just fix it, you know? But if you can't, you know, Quicken's not going to let you reconcile that bank account is going to say this doesn't work. It doesn't care if it's a penny or a million dollars. 
off is off, wrong is wrong. It's, a, it's, it's binary, P um, pass or fail, pass or fail. And so you're in this whole world of everything has to be perfect, everything has to be perfect. And those kinds of skills that make us conscientious, that make us um, excel in our careers and our paths, are really bad for our personal lives. So perfection is really, really bad for our personal lives. In fact, I made a mistake on these slides and I almost left it. But people were like, Bridget, you're a writer, you can't leave that mistake out. So, because I was going to make a point about perfectionism, but then I fixed it because Sometimes we can't help ourselves, right? <laughs> and like, it's, it's on slide share wrong. And then there are people, like five people are like, oh, Bridget, you made that mistake because they think that it's like it matters. I should have said, I put a, should have put an asterisk and said left intentionally, you know. <laughs> so we, we take something that makes us so great in our careers. You know, I always say my, um, <laughs> my neuroticism is so good for my career and terrible for my personal life. The fact that I th think three or 10 steps ahead, and if I do this, and this will happen, and this will happen, and that will happen, and that will happen, that will happen, and that will happen, okay, that's good for maybe like fantasy football, chess. It's good for your, um, you know, well, I know like who's doing their draft picks. You don't have to raise your hand. I heard that you guys don't participate. I'm sorry. Okay, so <laughs> Ben said, now, Bridget, this is the South. They're too polite to interrupt you. Um, so the thing is that I'm, I'm so used to like audience feedback. I'm sorry. Love you, Ben, wherever you are. Hi, Ben. Oh, happy birthday, Ben. Oh, that's a troll. I'm supposed to troll you. Happy birthday, Ben. OK, so here's the thing. It's like we take this thing that makes us so good at our careers, and then we apply it to every single thing in our lives. And that is so bad. It's super, super bad. It's very bad. It's bad. Did I say that it was bad? Okay, so here's some things that I, that I, that my little mantras I live by besides uh, respond, don't react. Respond, don't react is my number one thing I live by. Progress is better than perfection. Something is better than nothing. Done is better than perfect. Because I, I can't even tell you how many times we have even great projects, even in our marketing team, that just get held up because how many times are we going to edit this thing? No, it's done. I'm calling it. Put it on the internet. Right? Just somebody, at some point, you have to say, this is done. You know, it's not, it's not the money pit. You're like, your website should never be like the money pit. Don't keep, like, renovating it. Like, put that energy into putting content on it. Put that energy into publishing. Put that energy into uh, getting more clients. You know, it's, it's like because every time I look at my website, I'm like, oh man, that's terrible. I'm like, whatever, Beaver Builder, it's fine. I, I don't care. It doesn't matter because you know what matters? The words. The words matter because communication matters because relationships matter. The only thing that matters is relationships. That's it. Everything else doesn't matter. I'm telling you, it really doesn't. And sometimes you have things in your life that will shake you to your core until you see that. For me, it was my husband passing away two years ago. You know what? Nothing else matters. The only thing I care about is you. You as individuals, you as a community. Because we don't have to get tomorrow guaranteed. We don't know what's going to happen. We're sitting around worrying about things that don't matter. What matters is that you communicate that you do X, Y, and Z for your clients. What matters is that you communicate with your team on Slack. What matters is that you're progressing and going forward. Because in tech, we're always learning, things are always changing, and once you finally figure something out, Twitter's gonna change their UI, and you're gonna be like, ah, no, 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 I just made a tutorial with the gear button, and you've got the three dots. I hate you, Twitter. <laughs> Let's talk about whole health, okay? Let's talk about your whole health. So we've had a lot of talks in the WordPress community about mental health, and they're good. And it's good to talk about you know, the fact that we're all dealing with imposter syndrome because of the demographic that is heavily uh, us. Um, I have a personal working theory that 
more than 50% of the people drawn to uh, working with computers come from dysfunctional backgrounds based upon my own social scientist <laughs> data. And it, no, I'm, I mean, I, maybe it's funny, but I don't think it is. Because, um, no, I'm serious. Here's the thing, because a computer does what I say. I can control a computer. I couldn't control my alcoholic mother, right? I have no idea what she was going to do. You never knew what kind of mood she was going to be in. It was, it was going to be hugs or knives thrown at me, right? So a I know from talking to people <coughs> that a lot of us have grown up in less than ideal situations and are drawn to the fact that we can control that. So it means that we don't always think about our whole health. We don't always have healthy ways of communicating. We don't always have healthy ways of coping. And we don't always have healthy ways of viewing ourselves. And when I say we, I mean me, and maybe it's also you. So I'm going to talk about me, because I don't know you. And I would never call you out if I did, because that's rude and mean and cruel. So that, that's, this is the context of why I'm saying what I'm saying. So I have an ER approach. I like words that end in T-I-O-N and E-R. I'm going to be better, I'm going to be faster, I'm going to be smarter, I'm going to be thinner, you know, whatever it is. It's er. Because you know why? It means progress. So if I started losing weight, uh, like my doctor said, and, and like I'm supposed to be, I was 237, I'm supposed to be like 137 or 135, I'd be like, I have 100 pounds to lose. It's not going to happen. Have you, have you lost your blah, blah, blah mind? It's just, you know, you're crazy. But if you can do a little bit, you're like, you, how do you eat an elephant? So let's talk about physical health. So these are some of the things I started doing. So I had a little crisis in February, and my doctor was like, so Bridget, I think maybe your blood pressure is high and you're pre-diabetical. So... Uh, my husband was diabetic. We used to say diabetical, sorry. <laughs> diabetic. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, I know what A1C is. That's terrible. Yeah, I'm definitely in that pre-diabetic range. So she goes, I want you to walk. She's German. I want you to walk. She's like, you're going to stroke out. <laughs> like, that's what she said to me. I'm like, oh, I called Jen. I'm like, oh, my doctor's yelling at me. I hate her. We're all like, let's kick her up in the alley, beat her up. She loves me now. But um, So she goes, I want you to walk an hour a day. I'm like, First of all, even if I had an hour a day, I have, have you lost your mind? That's not going to happen. So what I did was I started walking some farther, longer. So I started with like 15 minutes a couple times a week. And then I would do a little bit longer. And I did 20 minutes. And now I can walk two miles, which I never have been able to do for like 10 years or something. Um, no problem. For me, I started eating more protein. Now, if you're plant-based, you know, just do whatever is right for you. I'm just telling you, this is just about me, because um, I'm going to talk about me, because <laughs> I don't know you. Um, but I, I found, I started realizing that I was more depressed, and I didn't feel as well when I wasn't eating enough, pro more pro enough protein. So I started getting protein shakes and um, stuff like that because and because my mind wasn't working it was part partly partly grief and um partly like i just things were not firing correctly and so i said okay let's do an experiment what if i start doing this you know a b test your life and i started taking naps naps are real people it's a real thing you cannot you can hack a lot of things but you can't hack your circadian rhythm there is a reason why that energy drink Five-hour energy says, do you have the 2.30 feeling? Because the 2.30 feeling is real. Countries in Europe take naps at 2.30. So um, I started doing this at lunchtime back when I was an office manager and then continued it when I was a remote worker. So I had a special ring for my direct supervisor. Everybody else, I don't care. So what I did was I put on my timer on my phone for 15 minutes take my glasses off and lay down. Now my dog's like totally bugging me if I don't do this because he's all trained. And I say, okay, 15 minutes. The world will not end in 15 minutes if they don't have contacting me. 
Um, even if somebody dies, there's nothing I could do about it in 15 minutes. Like, they could still wait for 15 minutes. Like, they're not even going to call it for 15. You know what I'm saying? Like, 15 minutes is not that big of a deal. I'm serious. Like, I, I literally did, when I went to the hospital with my husband and he did die, it took six hours. Like, 15 minutes is fine for a nap. Um, and I, I'm not making a joke, but I am making a joke. But also, he, my husband was very... Um, an orthodox, he would have appreciated that. <laughs> so um, he's the one that taught me how to do this because he said, Bridget, the World War II fighter, uh, fighter pilots, they would just stay inside of their cockpit. They would land back on the carrier and all, they had to just wait. Uh, they couldn't get out. They would just get refueled, kind of like NASCAR, like, you know. But so they just sat in their cockpit and they relaxed their toes and they relaxed their legs and just, just totally relaxed themselves. It's not even really about sleeping as, as much as it's saying, okay, body, you get to rest. Because our, our whole, our physical health matters. And if you had a Venn diagram of everything, these would all intertwine and connect. So um, take a nap. If you were a smoker, you'd have a smoke break. <laughs> Emotional health. So, well, I'm serious. Like, the smokers get smoke breaks, and it's like 15 minutes, so whatever. If, you, if you're your own boss, ask yourself if you're allowed to do that. Uh, emotional health also matters. Um, so, I, people think that I'm a super open uh, person that's public. I, well, I am now, but I did start out that way. Um, I started trusting my close friends with things that were going on with me. And I started using um, Facebook kind of as a PR mechanism, like, because so many people were asking me how I was after my husband passed away that it was just getting annoying. I, I, that sounds bad, doesn't it, Jen? Yeah. I, didn't mean it, I didn't mean it that way. It's just like, how can I make this more efficient? This is where I am. Blah, 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 blah. Now you know. And so people, so I just started telling Facebook um, what was going on in my life. People were like, you're so brave, you're so whatever. I'm like, well, I don't take a selfie when I'm crying in the corner. You know what I mean? Like, that's real life. But I had my close friends, including Jen Miller, who called me every day, multiple times a day for the whole first year that um, I was grieving. And that is when I learned to feel. It's okay to feel sad. It really is. Um, and it's okay to cry. Um, I, I saw this thing right after my husband passed. It was the Olympics. And so they were having all these nostalgia videos, you know. And there was uh, that one with Carrie Strug um, for the, um, not the pole vault. What's that horse, the pole, ho pummel horse? Some, yeah, something like that. It was gym, gym, it's, like a, it's like a big, long thing, and they, they jump, and they touch it, and then they flip around or whatever. Pummel horse? Anyway. So, anyway, so it was a big deal, like, and the announcers were like, oh, it's, you know, it's all on Carrie. Like, she gets a 10, then... The United States wins for the first time against China. It was like the gymnastics version of Miracle on Ice. And so um, she got up there, and she's all into it, and she runs and flips over, and then, boom, her ankle, something went bad with her ankle, broke it or whatever. She fell down. She was like, oh, my gosh, she could have not even deal. And so um, she got back up there, and her, co her mom was like, oh! And her coach is like, yeah, they do this, like, you know. And I just think that it's just so funny to me because I'm watching it and I'm going, wow, this is really interesting. So the parents are feeling like, oh, no, my daughter is hurt. And the coach is like, that's nothing. Just keep going. We can do this. You can do this. I believe in you, you know, whatever. And, and when I was watching this video, like, and being introspective like I am, I was kind of thinking, like, how does this apply to me? Because I'm totally not an athletic person at all. Walking is my sport. Um, and so I was telling this story to my friend Chris Ford from Reactive Studios, and she was like, Bridget, you have to tell people the story. That's why I'm telling you this story. Because a lot of times... We feel like we're a failure because we 
feel pain. But pain is part of the human condition. And athletes are praised for feeling pain and enduring anyway. But in mental health, there's something wrong with us if we feel pain. And that's total blip, 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 blip. That just, I beat myself. So in this, in this video, you can look it up on YouTube, or I wrote an article called I Am an Emotional Athlete on Medium.com. And she gets up there and she's doing her thing. She's shaking it out. She's going like this. And her coach is like, you can do it. And she just sits there and then she goes like this. And her, she like arches her back and she goes like this. And then on her face, you see it, you see it on her expression. Like she's determined. There's resolve, there's grit. There's everything that makes America amazing. Like it's all right there. Like that's us. Like we just get up. We love an underdog, right? And she gets up there and she runs as fast as she can, flips over, lands, does her thing, boom, boom, and then collapses and starts crying, has to be carried off. And I'm like, that, that right there. When I told Facebook, I go, this is how I feel. Watch this video. That's me. That's how I feel. I am in pain. I'm in pain. I'm shaking it all out. But I'm getting up and I'm going to work. And then when work is over, I collapse. Emotionally collapse. It's okay. And I spent so many times just crying and crying and crying. And, say, and feeling like, what is wrong with me that I'm still crying and crying and crying? But crying is part of how we heal. The, the tears actually contain cortisol, the protein um, that has stress. It was a stress hormone. I mean, there is a different composition in those kinds of tears. And our bodies know how to deal with stress. We have to allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to feel the pain. To let it pass. And then I get up. I put my peppermint soap in my washcloth. I make it super hot. And I put it on. And I breathe it in. And I just wash my face. I go, okay, Willard. You're okay. And then I keep, keep going. Well, pretty soon, that wasn't enough. I was having so much anxiety. And I've counseled people for years. Um, and I know everything to tell you to conquer depression. It wasn't working. And I told my doctor, the one who said I was going to stroke out, she said, um, you know, I told her I have addiction issues in my family and I don't want to take anything that's habit forming. So she gave me Lexapro. And I remember very distinctly March 8th of last year waking up with ideas in my brain flooding. And I'm like, oh, we could do this and this and this and this. And I could do this and I could do this. And I, and I was like, whoa. And that, like, that was a breakthrough for me because I didn't even know I was that depressed. But I, it, my own pride kept me from even telling my doctor what I really needed. Now I'm loud and proud. Lexapro, 20 mil, well, actually 40 <laughs> milligrams. Okay, I'm serious. I'm serious, you guys. Financial health. So this all goes together, physical, mental, financial. Because, and this is what I see, is, this is my biggest part, this is my biggest passion. I want everybody to stop undercharging for your hourly rate, please and thank you. I, for, uh, yeah. And if you can get away from hourly, that's even better, okay? So here's the thing, I've, I spent, like I said, I spent a long time in construction accounting and we do job costing in construction. So job costing means you, uh, you account something that you do for that exact job. So you can see if that job is profitable or not. And the biggest problem you have in this industry that I've found is number one, people do not know how long it really takes them to do things. 
Just because it's easy to make a website doesn't mean it doesn't take time. And your time costs you something. Do you know how much it costs you to breathe oxygen on this planet? Because it costs you something. You know, I know that to be as poor as I am, I have to make $70,000 a year in California, sorry. Uh, just to be in the, my little ghetto by myself without a roommate, which I hope to God I never have to have. Um, it's hard enough living with my husband. But um, introverts, right? So this is the thing. It's like, do you know how much it costs you? Meaning, do you know what your expenses are? Are you accounting that? If you're, if you're a small business, if you're a freelancer, please stop charging $25 an hour. Like, that's not even what I should have been making as a secretary. You guys are building the internet, 30% of the internet. 30% of the internet y'all are building. So we have uh, this presentation that did, um, by Samantha Zangit from Women Who WP, and she did a hypothetical breakdown and people were like, oh yeah, so what if you charge $100 an hour? Guess what it was when it's all said and done, what you really make? 16. So who wants to work for $16 an hour in here? I'm pretty sure zero people. Unless you're like a you know, high schooler and that's better than in and out or something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, do you have an in and out here? No, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I know it's kind of a sore point. It is what a hamburger's all about. Maybe one day you'll get one. Um, I believe that you're worthy of having an in and out. Um, that's the biggest thing. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this because of the people I talk to, the anecdotal um, conversations that I've entered in, and because this was my story. So I'm gonna be 45 in June and it took until I was 42 years old to believe that I was worthy of making more money, of, uh, that, I, that my skills were actually marketable. I had no idea. I thought everybody can tweet. Can everybody tweet? That's why my name is You Too Can Be a Guru, because it was like tongue in cheek. Oh, anybody could do this. You could do this. It's, it's not that hard. Well, so I'm like, oh, so I didn't even think that I was awesome, you know? <clears throat> and then this year, my friend started telling me, she said, Last year, she goes, Bridget, say I'm awesome. I'm like, you're awesome, Julie. And she goes, no, say I'm awesome. I'm like, you're awesome, Julie. And it's like, say goodnight, Gracie, right? <laughs> so she would say, so she texts me last night. She goes, I'm awesome. I go, I am awesome. I love me. I love me. And it sounds so stupid, but it's like the hero pose or whatever. Your, your body is connected. It's a big, giant ecosystem. We like to think of everything in compartments. You know, like even you do unit testing or you have a staging site and your code works on code pen, but what if you have a different browser? Now it doesn't work. And then, so this work, this JavaScript works here, but not on this website because there's this other plugin. That we, we, we like to test in clean rooms. We like to test in all these ecosystems, but that's not life. Life is messy. Life is complicated. It's all connecting all over the place and connecting back. You know, it's, it's, it's backwards. So I, I really want you to believe that you're worth charging more. And then do it. You know, and my friends, that, my friends and I keep each other accountable. They'll say, my client wants X, Y, and Z. And then, uh, should I give it to him? I go, if you want to, but make a zero dollar invoice and say, this is what it costs to do this. For you, for you, it's gonna be free this time. Market it however you want, but you have to get in your brain. That was the best tip we got from Samantha Zanga. Guess what, I did it. I had a client who wasn't writing anything for his blog. Guess how hard it is to tweet for people who don't write? <clears throat> if you don't write stuff on your blog, it's pretty hard to tweet stuff from your blog. <laughs> and I hope that all of your websites have blogs because blog isn't a four letter word, but that's another talk. So, and then be, be open to other business ideas. So like for me, when I started my business in October, of course I want to do Twitter. I'd love to just do five Twitter, seven Twitter accounts and that's it. And just jam, you know? And so, um, but 
when, when you read on Twitter what people are saying, sometimes you find other ideas or you're talking to friends or whatever. And so um, I was like, man, I'm going to Raleigh. I kind of need a little extra money for my dog sitter. And people were like, I hate writing my speaker bio. That's terrible. I hate writing about myself. Oh, speaker bio. Ugh. And so I said, I just did it as a fluke. I go, hey, I'll write your bio for $25. Fast, fast PayPal cash. I think I've written like 12 or 14 so far. <laughs> and then people are like, wait, can you, I'm a second language learner, can you like redo this website? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Well, wait, can you do this email marketing for me? Because you're writing bios. Well, yeah, I could do that. Like, that's not what I really want to do. Like, that's not my jam. Like, I refer all blogging to Jen Miller at needsomeone2blog.com. Like, I don't want to blog for you, but like writing bios is fast. It's fast, fast, fast. I know, it's pumping them out. I got, and I was having fun. I was having so much fun. I'm like, Jen, I'm writing bios. This is like so fast. Boom, boom, boom. It, it, it was so fun for me. But see, you have to be open to different things. Uh, no, I don't write. I, I only do this. So if, if I'm all closed about it, then, uh, then I'm not going to be able to, you know, be open to new ideas. You know, it's just like, ah, uh, I only do Twitter. That's it. You know, it's good to have a niche. Like, I specialize in business to business. I don't do retail, you know? I, I don't do Pinterest. I refer to that, you know? That it's good to have these kinds of niches or niche, whichever way, gif, jif, whatever. So be open. Believe that you're worthy. There was a tweet, there was a tweet from Chris Doe the other day, and I was like, oh, if I could tweet this a thousand times, I would. You belong in the room. You, your client came to you because you're the expert. You guys are the experts. Maybe you don't know more than somebody next to you, but you know more than your client does. That's why they're paying you, and they should be paying you more. They should be paying you more. You should be charging them more. Thank you. So anyway, we are a community who understands iteration by collaboration, because that's what open source is. GitHub, CodePen, whatever, blah, 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 Slack, uh, track, blah, forking, I don't know, whatever you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Ben's idea of having a Google Doc, but I just went to dev meetups and asked the dumb questions. What's the difference between front end and back end? And what's the WordPress administrator section dashboard thing? Because <clears throat> you don't know. So, so what I did was I put my issues on GitHub, because I know GitHub is where my developer, lovely, awesome people are, you all. And I thought, you know what? Let's, let's iterate. What are the things that you can do? What are the things that you're doing to make your life better? I mean, I'm doing other things. I'm getting massages. I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. Like, what can you do today to move your life forward in an ER, in a progress direction? Your personal life. The life that really matters. I mean, it all will affect your career. But if you're not taking care of yourself, you know, I mean, maybe you live with your mom, or maybe you have a wife that's amazing, or a husband. You know, but if you, it's, you, it's you, it's up to you. I can't help you. I can only tell you this is what I did. So I thought it would be super cool. So I opened it up, and I made each one of my sections uh, Physical, mental, and emo I mean, physical, emotional, and financial, an issue. And I think that means you can comment on them, right, Ben? Like, if you have an issue, I don't, I don't really know how GitHub works totally. I was like, I wrote my talk on GitHub, developer friends, <laughs> this is so cool. Um, but you've got to have actionable goals. You have to have actionable goals. So now I'm at 209, well, 209, 210, 211, 209, 214, 210, like I'm like hanging out down there, but I'm not at 237 anymore. Now I'm trying to get to, two, just, to just a 199. That's like, that's my actionable thing. Then when I get to 199, I'll, I'll just think about getting to 195. You know what I'm saying? Like, with, it's actionable, it's actionable. And you think about just, just charging, so I have old clients at old rates. So start your new clients with your new rates. Doesn't matter, you don't have to change everything. Change one thing. Change one thing. Um, thank you.
drum beat we have going on. That's cool. Thanks so I much. Sorry for the this. audio issues. I'm not really